All right, in this video, we'll see some of the typical applications of multiple interviewers. And those include uh, the area of a planar region or the volume of three-dimensional solid, and so on. So let's see. And our first uh, example of applications is the area of a bounded closed region in two-dimensional space. So here's the definition. Let D be a bounded and closed. Closed region in two-dimensional Euclidean space. And we say uh, D has an area uh, this is the definition if we say this uh, bounded closed region D has an area then that means the following integral converges to x dy so this is an integral of a function that is actually the constant function being equal to 1. So if this has some value, then we say that this value is the area of this region D. Of course, we know how to calculate the area of a rectangle or circle or some simple uh, shapes, but uh, for arbitrary bounded closed region, this is the definition. Okay, so based on this definition, let's calculate uh, the, the area of a circle. So let's say D is, uh, is the set of points in the circle with radius A centered at the origin. Okay, so according to our definition of this area, the area of this uh, bounded closed region D is given by this double integral dx dy where d is this one but uh, here we use the uh, polar coordinates so x is equal to r cos theta y r sine theta so as we have seen in a previous video uh, the Jacobian of this is just r so this is r varies from 0 to a, and the angle in this case varies from 0 to 2 pi, and the Jacobian is r. So we integrate with uh, respect to theta and r. Okay. And of course this doesn't include theta, so we can uh, separate, de decompose this double integral into the product of two integrals. So that is this times this. And of course, this is uh, r square over 2 from 0 to a times this is 2 pi. And this is 2 will be cancelled and we have pi a squared as we know it. This is the area of the circle with radius A. Okay, our next application is the volume of a solid. And here's the definition. Volume. So let's say V is a is a, some solid figure in three-dimensional space. So it's a subset of three-dimensional space. And we say uh, this V has a volume if uh, the following triple integral converges dx dy So when this converges, this has a finite value, and that is the volume of this subset, V. 
Okay, and let's see a simple example. That is the volume of a sphere with radius a. So that can be defined as the set of points such that the distance between the origin and the point is less than a. So it's this. So this defines a sphere uh, in the three-dimensional space. So the volume of the sphere can be calculated as this triple integral. Z, where this B is in this set. Okay. So to calculate this, it is most com convenient to use so-called spherical uh, coordinates. So, uh, so that is defined in the following method. So let's make a 12 picture here. X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. Okay. So take an arbitrary point in the space. So we have X, Y, Z. So these are the Cartesian coordinates. Okay. So here's the origin. So we project this onto the xy plane like this. So this is the projection. And here's the y angle. And so the, the angle between the z axis and this vector is defined to be theta. So this can vary from uh, 0 to pi. So this can be Theta can be from 0 to pi. Okay. And the distance between the origin and the point is r. So it's the radius. So that can be 0 to possibly infinity. Okay. And from this projection, we define the angle between this projected uh, vector and the x-axis as phi. Okay? And this phi can be from 0 to 2 pi, or we usually use the convention that it varies from negative phi to pi. Okay, so pi, pi. Uh, to make it uh, injective, maybe we should exclude negative. Or this, or either way. Using these conventions, uh, so we can project this vector onto the z-axis actually. So, so this z-coordinate will be expressed as r cosine theta. So z will be r cosine. And uh, this projection, so this length here is sine, so this will be r sine theta, okay? This, from here, here to here. So this length should be r sine theta. But depending on the angle, uh, depending on the angle, uh, theta, this can be negative, but, but that's fine. So in that case, it will be either in the uh, second quadrant or uh, some other quadrant in the xy plane. So now we, okay, let's consider this vector in xy plane. So we have this vector. This length is r sine theta. Now this xy, this angle is phi. Okay, so the x coordinate is r sine theta times cosine phi. And this y coordinate is r sine theta times uh, sine phi. So we have x equal to uh, sorry 
theta cosine y y and sine theta sine phi so we have this and uh, so now we can calculate the Jacobian of this uh, change of varieties. So let's do that. Uh, so Jacobian uh, derivative of x with uh, with respect to uh, which one is the first? Let's say r. Okay. Then x with respect to theta x phi and y r y theta y phi z r z theta z phi okay so if we differentiate this one with respect to r we have sine theta cosine phi then this one is r and cosine theta cosine phi and this one minus r sine theta sine phi and this one so differentiate y with respect to r we have sine theta sine phi uh, with respect to theta With respect to phi, r sine theta cosine phi, and z with respect to r, we have cosine theta with respect to uh, phi, r theta, we have r minus r sine theta, and this with respect to phi is zero. So now calculate this determinant. And let's try to do that in using this uh, the last way. Okay. So first cosine theta this is positive and negative positive. So cosine theta and this one. sine theta sine phi cos theta sine phi sine theta cos phi and then this one negative but uh, we also have negative sign here so positive r sine theta and uh, this right so that sine theta cosine phi and negative r sine theta sine phi and sine theta sine Okay, let's continue. And for the first one, uh, we have this times this minus this times this. So that's uh, we have r square actually. So let's take it out. R squared and uh, cosine theta sine theta cosine squared phi. So cosine squared phi and here we have cosine theta sine theta. We have cosine theta sine theta, so that can be taken out. And plus uh, sine phi sine phi. Okay, that's sine squared phi. Cosine theta sine theta. Okay. And here again we have uh, r r here, so we can take it out. That will be r squared with this r 
side of theta, and uh, we have sine theta, sine theta, so that's sine squared theta, and uh, cosine by cosine theta, so that's cosine squared pi, and we have sine theta, and sine theta, so that's sine squared. Cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi times sine squared uh, theta. And this is one, and this is one, and this is one. So we have r squared, and we have cosine theta squared, sine theta squared. Sine theta, sine theta, so sine, th sine theta, we can factorize, and cosine squared theta here, and plus sine squared theta here, so that's one. So after all, the Jacobian becomes this. Uh, be, uh, notice that sine theta in general can be negative, but uh, in this spherical coordinate system, theta is allowed to vary in this range. Uh, so as long as theta is between 0 and pi, sine theta is always positive or 0. So we don't have to worry about the absolute value signs. Okay. Now let's go back to the calculation of the volume. So this triple integral becomes this. Uh, in terms of the spherical coordinates, uh, r varies from 0 to a, and theta varies from uh, 0 to i, and phi varies from 0 to uh, 2 pi, or it can be from negative pi to uh, positive pi, but uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's it's uh, it's periodic. Okay, and don't forget this uh, Jacobian factor. Okay, so this is phi, and this is theta, and this outermost integral is with respect to r. Okay, now this function does not contain any phi, so we can just take it out. And we can factorize r squared and theta squared, uh, sine theta, so we can uh, split uh, these integrals. Okay, so 0 to a r squared dr, and from 0 to pi sine theta d theta, and from 0 to 2 pi So now it's easy. So this it's, this becomes uh, so just make that uh, simple. That's r cubed three and from zero to a times and cos sine sine theta. So that's negative cosine theta from zero to pi, and this is uh, two. So this is a cubed over 3, and this one, so cosine pi is negative 1, so negative negative 1 is positive 1, minus, and minus, cosine 0 is 1, times 2, so this is 2, so that's 4 pi a cubed over 3. As we know it, this is the volume of the sphere with radius a. So far, we've been dealing with very simple examples. Now let's try something less trivial. So here it is. First, let's define a set, C1, 
that is the set of points in three dimensional space defined as this y squared plus z squared less than or equal to a squared. So this is the equation, uh, this defines a circle in the yz plane and the x coordinate varies from negative h of 2 to positive h of 2. So this defines a cylinder lying in the direction of x-axis. And C2 is another cylinder with radius, with same radius, yz, but uh, lying in the different direction, uh, in a different direction, x squared, y squared, less than a squared. So this is a circle in the xy plane, and the z coordinate varies from negative 2 to positive delta e2. So these are two uh, cylinders uh, crossing at their middle points uh, in a perpendicular way. And now we define the union of these two sets. Okay, and then the question is, what is the volume of this C? So we want to calculate the volume of C. That is this triple integral dx dy dz. So how do how do we do that? Okay, before doing any calculation, let us visualize um, the situation here. So let's draw pictures. X-axis, Y-axis, and uh, Z-axis. Okay, C1 is a cylinder lying in the direction of X-axis. So let's see, so X-axis here. circle here and circle here and this is the cylinder and this radius is a okay and this x coordinate is uh, h of 2 and this x coordinate is a negative h of 2 and c2 so this is c1 and C2 is another cylinder. So that is in this direction. Okay, and the radius is A. And this coordinate is W of 2, and this is the radius of A. So this radius is and this z coordinate is negative w of 2. And so our goal is to calculate uh, the volume of this whole thing. So something like a cross. Okay. So how do we do this? Uh, first of all, this shape is a union of two uh, cylinders, okay? So the volume of C is the volume of C1 union C2. Now, I think it is uh, intuitively clear that this can be decomposed as follows. First, we calculate the volume of C1, and we add the volume of C2, and then we subtract the volume of the intersection between C1 and C2. C2. So that means we add the volume of this cylinder to the volume of this cylinder, and but we are double counting the, the common part, right? So common part is somewhere here. Okay, so we subtract uh, the double count. That is this intersection. So that should be it. Now, 
the volume of this and this, they are uh, easy to calculate. The volume of cylinder C1 is, so this is radius, uh, circle of, of radius of A, and the height is H. So that is pi A squared H. And similarly, the volume of C2 is pi A squared W. Okay. Now the question is, how do we calculate this part? So first, let's express this intersection more formally. So C1 and C2. So remember, C1 and C2 are defined in this way. So their intersection must satisfy all of these conditions. Okay, This and this and this and this. So basically, uh, if we just combine all the conditions, defining C1 and C2, that should be y squared plus z squared is less than a squared. And uh, x is between uh, this and uh, x squared plus y squared is less than a squared. And the z coordinate is between here and this. Well, actually, for the sake of illustration, let's assume that uh, h over 2 is greater than a. Okay. Otherwise, uh, it will be something like uh, if h is too short, then this cylinder will be buried, at least, at least partly buried into another cylinder. So let's avoid that. So assuming h and w are large enough, right, greater than a. So in that case, this condition and this condition, they are redundant. So we can just consider these two conditions. y squared, z squared less than a squared, and x squared, y squared, and y squared, y squared. Uh, it's not very easy to visualize this uh, shape, but uh, let's try it. Okay, so first in xy plane, we have a circle. So we have the cylinder of radius a. Okay, and let's rotate this axis so that around this y-axis then we have this z-axis here. So this y and this y they are the same axis and we rotate around this axis so that now z-axis is somewhere here. And right in this left picture the left uh, z-axis is pointing to to us okay now if we rotate this then uh, this x-axis is point x-axis is pointing to us so now and on this plane we also have the same circle with the same radius Okay, so uh, we have these two conditions, and uh, for this region, uh, we have either positive z coordinate or negative z coordinate, and we have actually positive or negative z coordinate for each of these four regions, and they are actually symmetric. So all these cross uh, intersections have the same volume. So uh, the volume of this intersection uh, can be calculated as A times the volume of W, where W is uh, the intersection, the, a part of the intersection where 
all x, y, z coordinates are non-negative. Okay. So w is a set where x squared plus y squared is less than x squared and z y squared plus z squared is less than a squared and x is non-negative, y is non-negative and z is non-negative. Now let's go back to uh, this figure. So if we fix the value of y, let's see, fix the value of y then the value of z can vary from 0 to uh, this value. So this is square root of a squared minus y squared because of this condition, because of this condition. Okay. So we only consider positive z x, y, z. So uh, if we visualize this in three dimensions, uh, it should look like this. X, Y, and Z. So we have a circle in X, Y plane, and we have a circle in Z, Y plane, Y, Z plane. Like this. And the value of z does not depend on x. Okay, so they are, they can uh, move independently, uh, maybe uh, indirectly dependently, but uh, so it will be like this. And both x and z can be as large as a, but as y becomes larger, then the value of z must decrease. So this is the volume, and this is w. So we have a square here on the x z plane and on the on the x y plane we have this quarter circle and on z y z plane we have another quarter of a circle then uh, this the volume of this w should be uh, this this So uh, let's define this part in the xy plane as d. Okay, so d is xy, where uh, x squared plus y squared is less than a squared, and x is not non-negative, and y is then for each, so this, in this picture, this base uh, area is D, okay? So for each uh, uh, element in this uh, area D, then we calculate the height of this uh, cube ball. Okay? Then we add it, add them. So the height of the cuboid is, of course, uh, that depends on, on, on the value of y, uh, like uh, this one. So this height, so if we fix the value of y and x and y, actually uh, the height only depends on the value of y. The height is uh, square root of a squared minus y squared. So uh, the volume of w can be calculated as uh, this x y z but uh, this can be calculated as this x dy and uh, 
the value of z values uh, varies from 0 to squared of x squared minus y squared minus z. Okay. And this one is easy. Uh, that is just this. And now, if we fix the value of y, then the range of x is determined. So if we fix the value of y, then x can move from 0 to square root of a squared minus y squared. So this integral becomes uh, something like this. First, we uh, integrate uh, uh, with respect to x, uh, that is between 0 and square root of a squared minus y squared, and integrating this, this function. And y moves from 0 to a. But this function doesn't contain any x, so it's just a constant. So we just integrate this, and uh, the result is this times this. So it's a squared minus y squared dy. And that becomes a squared y minus uh, y cubed over 3. So that is uh, a cubed minus a cubed over 3. So 0 is 0, so that's 2a cubed over 3. But we must multiply this by 8. So uh, the volume of this intersection is 8 times this, so that's 16a cubed over 3. So after all, the volume of this set C is uh, the volumes, is the sum of the volume uh, is cylinders, volumes of the cylinders, that's pi a squared times h plus w, and minus the intersection. Yes, and we are done. Our next application is uh, the solid of revolution. So to consider that, first we consider a univariate function, uh, something like this. So that's uh, y equals to f of x. Then we rotate, uh, and then consider some uh, interval, closed interval between a and b. Then we rotate this graph around the x-axis. So this becomes three-dimensional. So the uh, z-coordinate will be something like this. So we have some uh, rotated uh, shape here. Like this and something like this. So this shape is called uh, the solid of revolution of this function. So more formally, this set is defined as this x, y, z, and x is between a and b. And here, it's rotation, so the distance between the x-axis and the any point, any point on the surface of this solid is uh, f of x. So that's uh, uh, the, the distance between uh, x-axis and the surface of the uh, 
solid is y squared plus z squared. Uh, that should be less than f of x squared. So it's basically the circle with the radius of the absolute value of f of x. So this defines the solid of revolution. So uh, in this case, uh, x axis, this x axis is the axis of the revolution. Now the volume of this solid of revolution is given by this very simple formula. That is pi uh, integral of f of x squared from dx from a to b. Intuitively this is very easy to understand because at every x so if we fix the value of x, then we have a circle of radius of f of x, absolute value of f of x. So that area is uh, given by pi times f of x squared. Right? Then we uh, move uh, the value of x slightly, then, then the volume of the cylinder is something like delta x. So if this height is delta x. Then we add this for all uh, interval between a and b. So something like this. So uh, in the limit, we have this integral. Simple. Uh, more formally, let's uh, prove this formula. So the volume of V is just this triple integral, dx, dy, dz. Now uh, x moves from A to B, so and uh, A to B, so dx, and we have left with double integral that uh, is the is the cross section of this uh, solid of revolution at a given value of x. So let's call that uh, figure as d of x. Uh, that is uh, dy uh, dz. And at this point, if we use the uh, polar coordinates, y cross theta, z Theta, then uh, this double integral uh, becomes from 0 to a times a times f of x. And so r varies from 0 to f of x, and uh, theta varies from 0 to 2 pi. And the Jacobian is R. And so D theta and D R. Okay, and this becomes X and uh, so there's no theta here, so it's R. Pi d r, and that is so r squared pi times zero to f of x, and that is a b so pi is out, and it's f of x squared. It. Okay, next application is the area of a surface in space, three-dimensional space. Uh, 
one simple example is something like this z equals to f of x and y this defines a surface in 3d space but we consider a more general case where there are two parameters and that determines a point in three-dimensional space D, U, and D, and Z, V. So if we have two variables, and that maps to uh, three uh, values, X, Y, Z, in 3D space, then this map, let's call it phi, defines a surface. Now, if this U, V moves in a bounded closed region in 2D space, then its image by phi defines a surface in 3D space. Okay, so it's not a solid volume, but it's a surface on some uh, curve, curved surface. Now we want to find the area of this S. So our goal is to find the area mu of S. Okay. And to do so, we first consider this bounded closed uh, region in two-dimensional space. So it can be of any shape, uh, as long as it's bounded and closed. So this is D. And then we consider a rectangle that contains this D. Let's call this rectangle D tilt. Okay? So this is in UV space. And let's say this is A, and this is B, and this is C, and this is D. Then, as usual, we partition this rectangle into smaller rectangles. Okay, so this is A0, A1, and so on, and B is equal to AN, and C. 0, C1, C2, and so on, and D is equal to, let's say, Cn. And based on this partition, let us define Dij tilde as this uh, smaller rectangle from Ai to Ai plus 1 times Cj and Cj plus 1. Okay, so if this is AI and this is CJ, then this rectangle corresponds to this DIJ tilde. Then we consider DIJ, we define DIJ as the intersection between D and DIJ tilde. Okay, so for example, uh, in, if this small rectangle is within D, then that's fine. But uh, in this case, for example, uh, only the intersection, so that is this part, uh, not this yellow part, is uh, DIJ. And our goal is to calculate this. And this can be approximated as the sum of uh, all these n minus 1, j from 0 to n minus 1, and the area of the image of dij. Okay, so we map each of these dij's by this map phi, and this will map to uh, this will be mapped to some three-dimensional space uh, x y z so there will be some surface on this and that will be mapped each dij is mapped to some uh, region on the surface in that three-dimensional space so if we add such small uh, patches together and then take the limit of uh, infinitesimally small uh, partitions, then that should correspond to 
this area of the surface. So now our problem is to find this uh, area of this image of DIJ. To estimate this quantity, uh, let's consider uh, the following case. So let's say this is DIJ. So this corresponds to AICJ, this point, right? So this point corresponds to AI plus 1 and CJ. And this point, AI, AI and CJ plus 1. And this point, AI plus 1 and CJ plus 1. So via the map phi, this will correspond to some uh, patch, uh, surface patch in the three-dimensional space. So let's say uh, this point corresponds to phi of AI, CJ, and so on. Okay, again, we approximate this patch by a parallelogram connecting these two points. Okay, so this point is AI, C, AI plus 1, CJ. This point is phi of AI plus 1 and C, AI and CJ plus 1. Okay, so the hologram will be something like this. It doesn't look quite similar, but uh, as we uh, make refine the partition, then this will uh, better approximate uh, this area. Okay, so this phi, oh, is phi of AI CJ is something like this, X AI CJ and Y AI CJ and Z CRAI CJ and this point phi of AI plus 1 CJ is uh, similar AI plus 1 CJ Y AI plus 1 CJ and Z AI plus 1 CJ so we take the difference between this point and this point. So let's consider only the x coordinate, okay? So that will be x ai plus 1 cj minus x ai uh, cj. So this can be approximated by this. So this is a linear approximation. We differentiate x with respect to u, the first variable, and evaluate that derivative at ai, cj, and the difference between the, uh, the u coordinates. That's uh, ai plus 1 minus ai. So we can do this for the same thing for y and z coordinates. Therefore, uh, the difference between this point between this point, AI plus 1, CJ minus AI, uh, CJ, is approximately so this. Uh, y dU, dT, dU, and all evaluated at AI and CJ. Okay, and times AI plus 1 minus AI. And we can do a similar thing for the difference between uh, this point and this point. And the result will be uh, the following. So that will be AI CJ plus 1 minus phi of AI CJ. So that is so the same, uh, uh, similar derivatives, but uh, in this case with respect to v, y dv, z dv, z 
we evaluated at AI and CJ times CJ plus 1 minus CJ. So let's call this delta AI and let's call this delta CJ. Now, if we have two vectors like this, this one and this one, then the area of the parallelogram defined by these two vectors, so that is this area, is given by the magnitude of the cross product between these two vectors, right? So let's say if we have two vectors in three-dimensional space, u and d. So let's say this is u and this is d. And we want to, if we want to find the area of this parallelogram, then we can take the cross product or the vector product, if you prefer, uh, u times d. Then its absolute value corresponds to the area of this parallelogram. Uh, I think you have learned this in linear algebra. So let's apply this to these two vectors. And the cross pr product between these two vectors is uh, the following. So uh, instead of this, we write like uh, x, u, and so on. Okay. So the cross product is like uh, unit vectors in x, y, z directions, and we have so this is a constant. Uh, so we can take it out. So x u, uh, y u, z u, and x v. So this is x v, and y z, and z v. And we take the formal uh, determinant. So this e1, e2, e3, they are actually vector vectors. So this is not exactly correct, but uh, formally we can write like this. So uh, the first component is uh, this determinant. So that's y u z v minus z u y v. That's the first component, x component. And then this one, uh, a negative sign. And uh, x u minus z u uh, x v and uh, the vector e2 and plus uh, this matrix x u y v minus uh, y u x v v3 so so this is just one zero zero and this is uh, one 0, 1, 0, and this vector is 0, 0, 1. So we combine them, the result is this. X, U, Y, D, and uh, let's move this inside. So Z, U, X, V, minus X, U, Z, V, and X, U, And the length of this vector is uh, the following. So that is square root of uh, each component squared. Okay, so y u z v z u y v squared z u uh, z u x v. x u uh, squared and uh, x u y v y u x v squared. So uh, we need to include these factors also. So that times delta a j uh, delta a i times delta c j. 
So that's the approximate area of the image of the object. So we add, we next add these uh, small areas all for all i and j. So that will give us the approximation for the area of S. So that is uh, i and j from 0 to n minus 1 and uh, this. Okay, so we take the limit of uh, infinitesimally small uh, partitions. So this will converge to uh, the following double integral. So we substitute this, uh, this with uh, this thing here. So this will be d and this will be dv. So that is uh, square root of uh, y u z z v y u z over v minus uh, z u y squared plus Excuse me. Uh, X u y v minus y u x v square. So square root continues to here, and d u d v. So this is the area of the surface uh, defined by uh, defined by this mapping. Well, this formula looks quite complicated, and it is, it is complicated. So don't try to memorize this, but try to understand how we derived this, okay? Then you can always derive this one anytime if, if you need it. Next, consider a special case where uh, the map is given as this. x, y is mapped to x, y and f of x, y. So this is a bivariate function. Uh, in, so if we plot this, this gives us a surface. So if we apply this formula to this, then the surface area is given by the following. That is, uh, so let's say uh, x moves uh, x, y moves some uh, in, in some bounded closed region. Then, and z is equal to f of x and y. Then uh, the surface is defined as this set. So the area of the surface, uh, mu of gamma, is given by this double integral. That is, uh, no, that is not. So partial derivative of f with respect to x uh, squared and partial derivative of f with respect to y squared plus 1 and dx dy. And proving this is straightforward, just apply this formula. And so for example, uh, in, in this formula y u, so y u should correspond to, uh, so, so this is this corresponds to u, this corresponds to v, and in this case, uh, x and y happen to be u and v. So 
y, a partial derivative of y with respect to u corresponds to a partial derivative of y with respect to x, which is 0. And partial derivative of x, uh, so x u, for example, another example, corresponds to dx, dx, which is 1, and so on. So if you apply all of these, then uh, this complicated formula is reduced to this more or less simpler formula. Now let's see an example. Let's define a surface by this x, y, z, and z is equal to a squared minus x squared plus y squared, and z is greater than or equal to 0. So, and also we assume that A is a positive constant. Then let's find the area of this surface. Okay, now since Z is non negative, then that means A squared minus X squared plus Y squared is positive. So that means x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to a squared. So this is a disk in 2D space. So this is a circle with radius a centered at the origin. So let's define uh, this bounded closed region D in xy plane as uh, this. Let's define by this. So it's a disk squared less than or equal to a squared. And let's define f of x and y as uh, this. So a squared minus x squared plus y squared. Okay. So the partial derivative is just 2x derivative with respect to y is negative 2y. So we uh, just plug these into uh, this formula. Then we have the area of s is given by this double integral. This squared is 4x squared and this squared is 4y squared plus 1 and dx dy. And here, since we have uh, x squared plus y squared, it's convenient to use the polar coordinates. Okay, so we use the polar coordinates. Let's say uh, x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. And r can vary from 0 to a, and theta can vary uh, from 0 to 2 pi. This becomes 2 pi and d theta 0 a square root. And so this is cosine squared plus sine squared, so that's 1. And we have r here, so that's r squared plus 1. And the Jacobian is r, okay, and dr. So this can be readily integrated. And since this has no theta inside, so these two integrals can be uh, calculated separately. So this will be 2 pi. And here we have got 2 pi. And from here, let's see, uh, what do we get? So uh, this is 4r squared. And uh, R. Okay, so let's see, that will be 4R squared plus 1. So if we differentiate something, we get square root of this. So that should be 3 power of 3 over 2. And, and we need some constants, so that will be uh, 12. Two, that's six. And we have 
six, so let's see. That will be eight. Okay, I don't have the tool. And six and then two. Yeah. So number twelve. <coughs> so that's Uh, 2 pi and uh, other terms. So this will be cancelled. So now it's 6 pi over 6 and uh, 4a squared plus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 minus, now remember a is 0, that's As a final example of uh, example application, uh, let's consider the surface of revolution. So if we have a univariate function, let's call it uh, f of x, then uh, between a and b, and if you rotate this around the x-axis, we have a uh, solid of revolution. And the surface area of that volume, uh, this solid, is the surface of revolution. Okay, so let's consider calculating the area of this surface. Let's call it S. And it can be shown that this area is given as this, okay, 2 pi, uh, integration from A to B, and absolute value of f of x square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared uh, dx. Okay, this is just an application of the previous formula. Uh, is it this one? It's a little bit long, but uh, so what we need to do is to define a map from 2D bounded closed region to three-dimensional space. Okay, that can be done by this. X and theta maps to X and F of X cosine theta and F of X times sine theta. And X moves between A and B and theta moves between 0 and 2 pi. So this x is the same x as this one, and this theta is the angle okay, between y-axis and the point on the surface. Okay, so this will rotate as theta moves from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so to this mapping, if you apply the previous formula, then you should get this result. That's it.